What's up, everybody? Welcome to No Breakaways, your source for all the Zwift racing tips and tricks. Excited. Season 8 of Week 3. This is it for everybody but the playoff teams, and they save the best. And by best, I mean hardest for last. I rode this course the other day. It is going to be tough. We're on Surrey Hills. You have five big, long, steep climbs where this race is going to be decided. This is definitely one for those mountain goats. Um, but we're going to talk about different strategies that everybody can use uh, near the end of the video to hopefully hang in this race and to have you get the best finish you possibly can. Uh, without ado, let's get into the course. Let's get into the bike ride and some of those strategies. All right, here we go. The Surrey Hills route, the A's and B's have 44.1 or 44.4 kilometers, 1,033 meters of climbing. The C's and D's, 37 kilometers, right around 830 meters of climbing. No one actually knows where the finish of the C's and D's are, are going to be at or what the exact uh what the exact climbing is. So I took a rough guess on here. I don't think this shows the course very well. So uh, big thanks to my main man, Craig O uh, from the Dirt Discord. He posted this and gave me permission to use it. Um, the Surrey Hills route uh, kind of broken out with the different hills. I, I really love this view. Uh, as you can see, there is a 5K lead in. Uh, that lead in includes your first Fox Hill where you do get points. Um, going forward, we have Leith Hill. Box Hill, you don't actually don't get any points on Box Hill because you don't go through the start finish. So that's just going to be a hard climb. Uh, then Keith Hill and Fox Hill. So there will be four places for you to get the intermediate points this week. First Fox Hill, Leith Hill, Keith Hill, and Fox Hill. We'll go through each of those hills and all of those course features in a lot of detail coming up. As always, uh, we have the intermediate points. We have the first across the line, where uh, those are your first 10 people to cross. In this case, it's the KOMs. And the fastest through segment, that's who climbs these hills the fastest. So for the first across the line points, we have two, for A's and B's, we have two by Fox Hill. The C and D groups only do Fox Hill once. Leith Hill and Keith Hill. Uh, for the available points, A's and B's, we have 220 first across the line points. C's and D's, 165. In the fastest through segments, uh, both groups have Fox Hill, Leith Hill, Keith Hill for 219 available points for the fastest through segments. So pretty even for the A's and B's on both sides. And the fastest throughs have a bit of an advantage in the C's and D's. Uh, that may play into your strategy, but really this is going to be quite a race of attrition. Power-ups, we have the Feather, which will be the one everyone wants. We have the Draft Van, which has some limited use, I suppose, on the on the flats. Uh, and we have the Anvil for the downhills, which, um, you know, frankly, I, I can't imagine anybody's really going to want. That's, you know, if you get it going through one of the KOMs, use it on the downhill. Uh, maybe you can catch up to an X group. That would be, that would be good, but that's one you're going to want to get rid of, um, you know, right away so that... Hopefully on the next hill, you can get your featherweight. So the meetup didn't actually start me in the pens. Uh, I believe you start in the normal pens and you take a left and you come over this bridge here. Uh, the lead in is about 5.1 uh, kilometers total, but you go up Fox Hill for some of that. So you have about 2.7 kilometers of flat ground. If you're lucky, it'll take five minutes before you get to your first Fox Hill. So make sure you get a really good warm up in and that you're feeling good, ready to rock and roll, because that first Fox Hill is going to be extremely hard. I anticipate that just being one of the toughest breaking points of this race. So let's hop right there. So the first little thing that you're going to come to is a uh, maybe like two kilometers in. There is a little bit of a hill here. Uh, you turn to the left. This is not where Fox Hill starts, so, but uh, this is a place I don't think anybody's going to try to do anything. I think everybody's going to be waiting until Fox Hill, but just be aware it does pop up to about 6% grade. Here's the Fox Hill KOM 2.4 kilometers, 4.9% uh, grade. For our expected time, uh, again, these are these are mostly guesses I had to extrapolate pretty wildly from one, one data point. For the women... Uh, cat A, uh, six to seven minutes at 5.5 watts per kg, 7.30 to 8.30 for the Bs, uh, the Cs, nine minutes to 10 minutes, and the Ds, 10 to 12 minutes. For the men, I expect Cat A, 4.50 to five minutes, 
uh, 6.30 to 7 minutes for the Bs. C is 7.45 to 8.30. And Cat D, 9 minutes to 10 minutes. Here we are coming up to these two houses here on the right. That's how you know you're you're getting close to Fox Hill. It's just in front of us. So you can't quite make out uh, the start point yet, but it is really close here. I'm going to go ahead. We're going to watch uh, Fox Hill this entire time. I'm not going to play it the whole time the second time. So if you want to get an idea, make sure uh, you know this is also going to be the finish of the race is back up Fox Hill. So you do hit this one twice. I did want to point out when you get to this bridge, you have about 1.6 kilometers left to the top of the climb. So this is a really interesting part of the course here. You you just came up over that hill and you see we're hitting a downhill where speeds are going to come way up. I think a winning strategy may be to really hit it hard right here on this flat going into the uphill and see if you can make a long break into the finish. It would be about a 0 0.2, 0 0.3 kilometer break into the finish. But because it is an uphill, there is a chance to kind of outsmart maybe some of your opponents and go at a place where they're not expecting. And you see it, it does kick up just a little bit here, um, you know, or maybe even make a make a break right here coming into the uphill where, where speeds are high, but there might be a chance for you to get away over the top. You see the view does change as you come over the top, which drives me nuts, especially in a race. So just be careful of that, make sure you go all the way through the line. And you are going to have to make sure you push over the top of these hills. It is vitally important that you don't give up right at the top of the hill here and accidentally lose a second or two because it's going to be hard to catch back on. Uh, the next important thing about these courses are the downhills. This is where you get recovery. I do anticipate that these hills, all of them are going to be pretty much all out. And you're just going to have to um, cover moves send in as much as you can and conserve as much energy as you can if you want those fast through segments. I'm sure there'll be some people that are able to break away and you'll know who you are. Um, but yeah, so this, this is going to be the downhill on Fox and we're going to skip over to the next hill. Here we are at the bottom of that Leith Hill uh, non-KOM climb. It is a very long non-KOM climb uh, leading up to the hard KOM. Uh, you can see the road turning up right in front of me here. So what I wanted to talk about is how you stick this part. It's going to pop up to 8 9% grade right here at the start of it. But a lot of this non-KOM climb is very draftable. Uh, I will go ahead and post my full ride video uh, here uh, and, and link to it. Uh, you can see the link above. But... Um, you need to go hard on this first part so you can stick with a group so that you can draft the second part of the non-KOM climb. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip right to the, the actual Leith Hill KOM because I know that's uh, the most important part for everybody in terms of points. Leith Hill KOM 1.9 kilometers with that really long lead in 6.8% average grade. For the women, total expected times, I'm thinking Cat A, it's going to be about the same as Fox Hill. So 6 to 7 minutes, uh, B, 7.30 to 8.30, C, 9 to 10, and Cat D, 10 to 12. For the men, same thing. Uh, Cat A, 4.50 to 5.20 or so. Cat B, 6.30 to 7. Uh, Cat C, 7.45 to 8.30. And Cat D, 9 minutes to 10 minutes. All right, we are almost finished with the non-KOM part. You see that gate and these signs over on the right-hand side. You're going to take a left, uh, this sharp left, and then right around there, the Leith Hill KOM starts. 
Uh, if you wanted to try to get a jump on the field, get a jump right there. Uh, if they don't know what's coming, you can see the, the start of the climb coming up. Uh, this is a long, it's not a long climb, but it's really hard. Uh, and so it's going to be, it's going to be a tough challenge. I don't think it's going to be a tough as your first Fox Hill, but I do anticipate people going all out for it. So we'll go ahead and watch this entire climb and talk again at the top. So here we are rounding this final uh, right-hand corner. You can't see the finish line. It's up uh, after a little left-hand turn. But if you're really going to go for these first through points, uh, or the fastest through segment, I suppose, but uh, you need to be getting after it around that right-hand corner, create some separation. Uh, if you're going to try to do just a very final sprint, you're going to want to start coming through maybe midway through this straightaway. Uh, but you can't leave it all the way to that left hand turn up there. Uh, so we'll let this go ahead and play out through the rest of that. And we will skip to Box Hill, which is the next hill, but not one of the KOMs. Here we are coming around that final left hand turn this is a really long run into the finish as you can see but you don't want to leave it till you can see the banner because uh, once you can see the banner the sprint is pretty much going to be all over um, but just get into the line after you come down off of uh, Leith Hill there is going to be a you, you take a left here there's going to be a little bit of a bump it goes up to five six percent it's just kind of a bump in the road uh, don't worry about it we're not quite to Box Hill yet here we are coming up to Box Hill. This is the first T you get to. You take a left and then you're on Box Hill, but this is not a KOM. So I don't know how the race is going to play out, obviously. This is would be an interesting place to attack because e people can't get fastest through segments and there's no points at the top. So they may be less inclined to chase a potential break. Um, I'm not saying it'll necessarily work because you got a lot, a lot of race in front of you. I mean, you you aren't even halfway through the course yet when you start Box Hill. But it would be interesting, you know, if you had uh, wanted to create a small break to try to do it over Box Hill. So a potential strategy here. I will let this run through Box Hill so you can see what's going on. Uh, if you look up in the mini map, there are a couple switchbacks. Uh, this is a very well ridden part of the course. Uh, because, you know, a lot of different courses go up Box Hill, but I'll let it play through. All right, here we come up to the banner of Box Hill. Again, this is not a KOM, so no one's really going to be sprinting for it. Uh, after that, this, there is a big flat, and then there's a little dip in the hill. Getting over that next bump is always really hard. Uh, I know I've actually been dropped after holding a pack <laughs> on this hill. So uh, make sure you keep your focus. You can't let off. You have to stick with your group. There is a what feels like forever until the downhill actually comes on the other side of this. Heath Hill KOM 4.3 kilometers long, 5.0 average grade. The expected times for the women 11 to 12 minutes at 4.8 watts per kg, 13 to 14 for the Bs, for the Cs 15 to 17, and for the Ds 18 to 20. For the men, we have 9.30 to 10.30 at 5.1 watts per kg. Uh, cat B, 12 to 13, Cat C, 14 to 16, and Cat D, 17 to 19 minutes. So some really long climbs here for Keith Hill. 
So you are basically going to come right off of that box hill climb. You take the downhill and you, you're right into Keith Hill. Uh, and I can tell you this is not a very pleasant experience. There we go. We just started it. Um, Keith Hill, in my opinion, is going to be the hardest climb of the race. Uh, even in my free ride, it was the hardest thing. And I, I wasn't trying to, to push it that hard. It's a very long climb. Um, and it's one where I think if you really wanted to make a break, this would be a super interesting place to try to do it. Uh, it's a long way to finish, so I think people are going to be hesitant to chase you. But this is a 4.3 kilometer long climb. You have that average 5.0 gradient. It's just going to grind and grind and grind on. You know, you're talking for most of us people, it's, it's going to be a... 10 plus minute climb so if you are a pure climber if that is your thing uh and i definitely know a couple of people who are salivating at this opportunity i think keith hill would be a really interesting place to try to make your mark on this race to try to really put the hurt to people so that going into fox hill you only have to deal with a couple more people and their legs are toast from this effort that you put in here this would be the first hill where I would start to think about leading parts of the climb that aren't the end where the points are to try to really hurt your opponents uh, instead of letting them do that to each other. So let's go ahead and we will watch this entire climb. Uh, I will speed it up quite a bit because it takes forever uh, and we'll talk about the top. So what you see here is a flat at the top of Keith Hill. Uh, it is a flat run in, so it's basically going to be a sprint finish if you can make it up that giant hill to actually get to the sprint finish. Um, but once you come around there, you're you're basically in the clear. You want to draft, recover as much as you can, or try to catch the person in front of you. Would be a good time to put in a little dig to try to catch somebody, uh, so you can take advantage of a draft. Uh, we'll watch the rest of this, and then we'll skip to the base of Fox Hill. Here we are coming back up on those buildings uh, before Fox Hill. You do kind of meander around a little bit before you get here. There are some very gentle rolling hills. I don't want to take you all the way through Fox Hill again, but suffice to say that this is going to be an incredibly difficult climb. People are going to be going full gas. Try to hang on there at the bottom if you're with a group and see what you can do over the top. Uh, you know, and good luck to everybody this week. This is going to be an incredibly tough course, but uh, I think we're all up to it. And hopefully there's some good tips here for you to uh, place as well as you can. So the expected times this week uh, for the women, I'm going to have to preface all of this with saying it's a complete guess. I did have some amens time from one race with some very high quality amen that I found. But even that, it's a this is a complete guess. Um, so I apologize if these times are off, but this should give you a decent guess at how long it's going to take for the Cat A women. Probably between sixty nine and seventy five minutes, so it's going to be over an hour. Um, Cat B eighty to ninety minutes. Uh, again, I apologize for these wide ranges. I just don't know. Uh, Cat C, uh, remember they're doing the thirty seven kilometers, so they're probably seventy to eighty minutes. Uh, is is my rough guess. And Cat D, 80 to 90 minutes. Uh, cat C's and D's, maybe it'll be shorter for you all. I'm not really sure. For the men, the Cat A, 67 to 70 minutes, I was able to tighten that up because I actually did have a race where some of the top Premier League uh, guys were doing it in about 65, 66 minutes. Cat B, probably 78 to 81 minutes. Cat C, 68 to 73 minutes and Cat D, 78 to 85 minutes. So let's take a look at the featured distances. Um, we have 
Fox Hill, the non-leaf hill climb. Uh, that's the climb before the climb. And, you know, it's it's a big one. So I wanted to make sure to highlight it. Uh, Leith, Box, Keith, and then Fox Hill, number two. Uh, I did it a little bit different this time. And again, thanks to Crago for this. Uh, I put the course position. So like on Fox Hill, Fox Hill starts at 2.7 kilometers and ends at 5.1 kilometers. So those are the start and end positions for each of these climbs. So you know about how long it's going to take. Uh, I know for me, I'm always looking at that top number to see when it's going to come up. So these are all the kilometers. I'll go to the next slide. That's miles. Uh, and, and you can take a look. All right. Let's talk about the strategies. I think there are three basic strategies depending on what kind of rider you are. First, I want to talk about the mountain goats. These are the pure climbers, uh, typically the, the little people uh, that can really get up these hills fast. I think what you need to do if you're one of these people, you need to ride wheels until the end of the first couple climbs. You're not going to win this race on the first Fox Hill or the first Leith Hill. But you can drop some people off. So if it does get too slow, you do want to push that pace some. Uh, don't be afraid to go to the front necessarily if your goal is to have as small a pack at the end of the race as possible. But in general, you do want to surf those wheels and conserve your energy for the end of the race when what you're going to try to do on the last Keith Hill, uh, if you're really feeling good and think you can stay away over that flat part, or the box hill climb, you're going to surge and try to really make a break on those hills. But if you're one of those mountain goats, you're going to want as few a people left at the end as possible. That's going to mean fairly sizable gaps up the hill to the next uh, little group so they don't catch you on the way down. The next group is the middle ground climbers. So these are the people who are very good climbers, but maybe they're not that elite level. We actually talked a lot about this uh, with Jackie and Jordan on Outside the Draft. I'll put a link right up here to that, uh, where we go extensively into how to ride these Surrey Hill uh, hills. But for a middle ground rider, on the bottom of the hill, you know it's going to be a lot harder. You know everybody starts out a little too hard on the bottom of these hills. So what you have to do, ride wheels at the bottom, but stick in, even if you know you're going above what you can handle for the whole hill and have confidence that it will slow down as it goes and you'll be able to get your heart rate back down and catch your breath. Um, if you do get dropped by the group, uh, maybe find another uh, couple other people to ride with, but try to stay close enough to the top group. You might be able to make up a lot of room uh, on the downhill with a really nice descent. Uh, Monalee did some great coaching with Katie on descents. Uh, I will link that up here, uh, all sorts of links today. But uh, on those descents, especially if you're a heavier rider, you might be able to catch those lighter riders on a descent, especially if they're in a small pack or some of those stragglers. Uh, and make sure you find your group. Find the group that makes sense for you. Don't uh, kill the first two hills totally above what you know you can do for the rest of the race and then end up sacrificing the whole back end of your race. This is going to be an incredibly long race. You know, you're talking an hour 20, hour 30, hour 40. Um, so, you know, you have to make sure you're staying within yourself. Third strategy, that's the rest of us. This is where I fall in. Uh, <laughs> find your pace from the bottom of the hill. Uh, don't necessarily worry about the other people. You're going to really concentrate on finding your pack, and you're going to want to work together with those people. I would be messaging people, being like, you know, hey, let's work together. Let's do this. Let's catch the stragglers. Because where you can make up places is the people that went out over their head. You have your pace down. You're going to be catching people all the way up the hill, which is really encouraging, encouraging really motivating. Um, and then you, the way you're going to finish the best, you're going to kill that last Fox Hill. You're going to save as much energy as you can by surfing wheels, by, um, you know, doing work within that group where that Fox Hill, any of the stragglers that came back, they're going to be dead by then. You're going to be able to just destroy that final Fox Hill and you're going to take kind of the best of the rest, the best of that group. Um, so that's kind of a fun position to be in too, because the whole race, you're going to be catching people. All right, let's talk a little bit about bike choice. Uh, so this week, I'm going to try something different. I'm actually going to use the Zwift Insider bike choice site to walk us through. Uh, Eric made an awesome graph over there. Uh, you'll see the link at the top, and I'll put the link in the comments too, so you can check this out yourself. So here is the Zwift concept bike versus the top performer. So this includes frame and wheel set. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at some of these bikes. I do believe this is mainly going to be a climber's course. There is a lot of flat on the course. There is a lot of downhill. 
However, most of us aren't that worried about the flats and the downhills, and I really do think that the pace on the flats and the downhills especially is going to be very slow. No one's going to be pushing it, trying to break away there because they know a hill is coming up. So if we look over here on the right hand side, you see flat test time on the bottom and climb test time on the left. So further down and to the right, these are your best climbers. So we see the Tarmac Pro with the lightweights. Uh, if you have the lightweights, this isn't a bad setup at all. Uh, I personally don't have them, so I'm not gonna, gonna ride this. As we go up a little bit, we have the Tarmac SL7 and the lightweights, but right in here, these are a lot of bikes that we all have with some wheels we all have as well. So you have the Tarmac Pro with the DT Swiss, the Aero 2021 with the lightweights, but the Tarmac Pro with NV 3.4. This is where most of us are gonna sit down here in this bottom region. I personally would go with the Tarmac Pro DT Swiss Arc 62. Even though the flats are not nearly as important on this course, um, this does give you a pretty significant flat advantage versus, say, the Tarmac Pro with the lightweights. Uh, so that's not to say that it's going to save you a ton of energy. But on these hills, you're only looking at about a one second difference between the lightweights and the uh, and the Arc 62s. So it's kind of your preference. Um, but really, Tarmac Pro with the DT Swiss, uh, the Tarmac Pro with the MV 3.4 is another great uh, option. But again. I would go with the DT Swiss because the only difference between the Envys and the DT Swiss is that the Envys are slower on the flat. So why pick them if they're the same climb time? Um, as we go back up, here's the Tarmac SL7 with the DT Swiss uh, wheels. You see just slightly slower on the climb than the Tarmac Pro, uh, the SL7 with the NV 3.4s. Any of those, those are your bike choices for this week, really. Um, those are the things that are going to get you, you know, at a very low level. Those are going to get you uh, to the top of the climbs the fastest, which is, in my opinion, by far the most important part of the course this week. So I put together the bike choices at different levels. As you see, it's level 10. You go the Cannondale Evo, DT Swiss, uh, level 15 uh, and up, the Tarmac Pro. You get the uh, Tarmac Pro at level 11, actually. Um, and then level 20, you can go to the Tarmac Pro and the Zip 353s. And if you got them, do the Tarmac Pro and the Lightweights. All right, everybody, that's it. Season 3, Week 8, Surrey Hills, the final week of Season 3. Uh, the very best luck to every single one of you. I had a ton of fun this year. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, you know, hopefully... Uh, these videos were have helped you. If you, they were, please click like and subscribe below, and we will see you next season. I'm going to be putting out a lot of content this summer on different ways to race Zwift, and we have some other really cool stuff that this is a teaser for coming out this year with the goal of helping you become a better Zwifter. We'll see you next time.